This is what Tyler's production feels like. But also this. Call Me Figgy lost the perfect job at showing the variety in Tyler's production. But how did he manage to capture so many different feelings and styles in such a unique way? I wanted to know, so I spent the last weeks reading articles, recreating songs and learning from videos. Here are the results. I started off by looking at the song What's Your Name, which is just built off of one 90s R&B song. In this one I started with the drums, where the Devil Dog adds some cool saturation to the drum bus. Then I went over to the bass line and for me to hear it easy I just pitched it up an octave and then it was pretty simple to transcribe. started switching in synths and layering different VSTs to end up with this combination which sounded pretty close. And besides a bit of EQing and a bit of flanger, the sounds were basically carrying themselves. Then there were just three melodic parts left. There's one simple lead playing on the top, and quiet piano adding some cool rhythm underneath it with some staccato chords and a little melody here and there. There was also this reverse synth accent and I added a room texture from One Shots and Chops Volume 1 but later more to that. This H-Town song was already pretty cool with the layering of these different sounds and giving it a bit more rhythm as well as the interesting chord progressions. For the next song I want to show you how Tyler created this luxurious feeling and what better song than Safari. For the intro Tyler used the chords from a sample which will appear later in the song and played them in some string VSTs layered with a pad. And Tyler is really continuing this theme of choosing instruments which would be playing in an opera as well. And to finish this intro off, I played the flute melody. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You played the melody? Uh, yeah. Do you expect the people at home to just have a flute laying around? Sh should they whistle the melody? Nah, you, you know what? You're gonna make a one-shot kit called One Shots and Chops, where you include flute runs and one-shots. <laughs> well, okay, this guy had some anger issues. Well, coming back, the next melody I added was this horn section. I know it's not the actual purpose of the setting, but it sounds really good and adds a realistic texture to the staccato notes of the trumpet. Because in the next part I use it for its actual usage. Well, sort of. <laughs> The next parts were a bit boring to me because he was just putting stuff in, taking stuff out again. But then it got interesting again because Tyler decided to play the actual sample. And he noticed that it sounds very similar to what we've heard so far because the whole song is based on this one sample. And really important to put the room noise in the group with the room reverb and of course adding the master dupe on top to give it some 
extra texture. What do you think? Did you learn something so far? I definitely did. When it comes to making your brass feel more realistic. By the way, thank you for liking the video. And if you don't like it, let me know what I can improve. Now I'll show you the most important parts of this nine minute masterpiece. Did you ever hear a classical part with a harpsichord followed by a synth part, which turns into an R&B part with an electric piano? Let me show you how Tyler did it. In the intro, Tyler added a flute, harpsichord and upright bass, giving it this orchestral classical kind of feeling. But how can you make a good transition from that to the synth part which comes next? Simple, you just use the cut so that it feels like a relief when he's playing the colorful up running up and down the chords layered with this washed out guitar. And the little synth lead which is also in there helps with the next transition to the sort of hook part of the song. But to make the next transition greater, Tyler adds some tracks to build it up even more. And right before the drop, he takes most of them out again. The lead that we just heard is also in there, giving it some familiar feeling. And the same is done for the chords, because the sounds that we hear, we've actually heard in the intro before. And this trick works so well that Tyler does it again when transitioning to the next bridge. First he cuts out the music, then he keeps some familiar sounds in there, but also adds some new ones like the Glockenspiel or the choir. But the second bridge does it slightly different. It gets introduced with these chords, which my friend Deshaun told me is called a backdoor 251. There's also some more really interesting stuff in the transition from the first to the second song. There are these flutes and strings playing those chords and everything in there just plays those chords in a different rhythm or arpeggio. And another really interesting thing is that the vibraphone, which is playing this arpeggio, gets accented on those two notes with a violin The second half of the bridge also has a really cool introduction with the piano first playing a couple of notes and then everything else comes in. Quick breakdown how I did the vocals on here, I used a sort of very speed. That means I go into macros, turn on real time stretching, slow and pitch everything down, record the vocals and then put it up again. Also, if you want new sounds and little embellishments, check out One Shots and Chops Volume 1. And this video teaches you how Kendrick Lamar makes samples? No. 